We remember that people of Bani Israel, by the will of Allah and by the mercy of Allah, they were freed from the oppression, from the tortures, from the persecution, from the tyranny of their tyrant rulers of Egypt. They, they just came out of it unscathed and without any problem and issue. They just walked through the river and in front of them, very, very much in front of their eyes, by the order and will of Allah, the all the army of the Egyptian rulers, they were drowned. And this was as a punishment for them from Allah, but this was a source of contentment of all the revenge which, which was in their hearts, in the hearts of the people of Bani Israel. And then by the mercy and rahmah of Allah, they were settled in the desert and they were given and provided with the shades of the cloud and the man and the salwa, the ready-made prepared foods from heaven. And then all the 12 fountains in the springs came out providing water for them. But now after freedom, after blessing them with freedom and after giving them all, showering them with all these blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expected what? Expected that they would be the obedient followers, supporters and helpers of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And it was now after freedom and after having a free piece of land for themselves, they were obviously e expected to implement the sharia of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. So for this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Hazrat Musa alayhi salam uh, first for a lesser days and then the days the duration of the days was increased for a 40 day meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Mount of Tur. And there on the Mount of Tur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Hazrat Musa his commandments. These are known as the Ten Commandments of Musa. These were the basic foundational orders from Allah to Bani Israel. And when we will go uh, through these Ten Commandments, we will realize that these are almost the same, same orders and the teachings as given in Quran to all the followers of Prophet Sallallahu also. Because we know that the religion, the teachings of Islam from Hazrat Adam alayhi salam to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the seal of prophets has always been the same. So these 10 commandments which were given to Musa alayhi salam, they were given in a written form and they were engraved on stone slates. And the reason being that Allah knew the temperament of the people of Bani Israel. So they were given in this form. Why? Because number one, so that they could see it with their eyes and they could touch, touch them with their hands. This all made it easy for them to believe and to have and develop a stronger faith. And moreover, it was also given to them, engraved these all these ten commandments and orders of Allah. They were given to them and handed over to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, engraved on uh, the on the slates, because so that they could not erase them. They could not alter the writings on the stone slates as they later did. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purposely did all that. Allah Alim and Hakim then gave them these commandments. Now, after being given these 10 commandments, they received them and they received these commandments in such a miracle form. They still refused to accept. Allah took a solemn pledge from them that they would uh, completely obey the orders. And uh, we've talked about it previously that the Mount of Tur was tilted on them as if it's going to fall on them and they're going to be crushed under the mountain. And then under this this uh, insecurity and fear, they uh, they accepted the commandments of Allah and they, took, they made the commandment. But then again, they broke it soon after and they started disobeying. So now in this verse, we will be talking about the 10 commandments which were given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And these, I will also repeat, are also the basic teachings of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
So the first point of this is what? لا تعبدون إلا الله Worship none but Allah. So the first commandment was about the faith on the oneness of Allah. Because the first and the foremost right on all the bondsmen is, is whose? Is Allah's. The first right on all the bondsmen is of the creator, of the sustainer. So the most important right of on all the bondsmen is of Allah's. And the most important right of Allah is to believe in his oneness and to refrain from associating partners in any form of polytheism. This is the same as we learned in Surah Tulfatiha when we make a covenant and promise with Allah, This is exactly obeying la ta'buduna illallah, that we will not worship anybody other than Allah. And this covenant and this order means what? That the worship Worshippers will worship and the bondsmen will worship and obey only and only Allah and none but, none but Allah. The obedience and worship will be only of Allah and will be only for Allah. The purpose of obedience and worship of Allah will not be to get any worldly riches or gains or advantages, but just to please Allah and to save ourselves from the displeasure and the wrath and the punishment and the hellfire of Allah. So this is the first commandment. And it is exactly similarly mentioned in Surah An-Nisa also, where Allah says, Allah says, "Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yashaa'u wa man yushrik billahi faqad iftara isman 'azima." Indeed, there is absolutely no doubt that Allah does not forgive what association with him but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills. And he who associates others with Allah has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. In verse 48 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah is talking about and mentioning a major sin which he will not forgive. That is an unpardonable sin is being mentioned. And then moreover, Allah has also talked about it as it being a, a huge fabrication with Allah. And then Allah has also labeled it as Ithman Azuima, a tremendous, a major sin. So three things now I repeat, a sin which will not be forgiven, an unpardonable sin, something which is fabricating over Allah, and then a tremendous or a major sin. What is this? Is to associate or find partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Polytheism is what Allah is talking about in this verse. We all know that on the day of the judgment for a person's salvation two basic things would be needed number one right faith or belief and the second be righteous conduct or righteous deeds so now the right faith or the belief we know it comprises of five parts or five sections of faith, or five pillars of faith, and by some scholars they are also considered as six. 
These five are Iman Billah, meaning faith or belief in Allah. Then the second being belief in the day of judgment, that is Iman Bil Akhirah, Iman in the day of judgment or the day of resurrection. Then Iman Bil Malaika, faith or belief on the angels and their beings. Iman Bil Qutub, belief or faith on the holy scriptures or the holy books which were revealed to the messengers of Allah. Iman Bil Rusul, that is belief or faith in the prophets or the messengers of Allah. And the sixth by some scholars is considered as faith or belief in destiny or fate. That is it being good or bad. So these are the five things for which a Muslim has to have faith or belief in when he enters Islam or when he embraces Islam. Prophet Sallallahu said that faith has more than 70 branches. The best among these is to declare that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And we have to be very clear about the fact that any distortion in this faith, in this faith or belief of Allah will not avail even if one's good deeds extend to the vastness of the heavens and the earth. As Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, verse 91, Allah says, Inna lazina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffarun falain yukbalu falain yukbala min ahadihim millul arzi zahabun la viftada bihi ulaika lahum athabun alimun wa ma lahum min nasireen as to those who reject faith and they die rejecting, never would be accepted from any such as much gold as the earth contains, though they should offer it for ransom. For such is a grievous punishment and they will find no helpers. So what is this? Allah is mentioning the punishment for those who reject faith or reject belief. And the first and the most important belief is belief in Allah. And as far as the belief in Allah is concerned, the primary and the foremost belief in Allah is the belief in oneness of Allah, monotheism or tawhid. This is the first pillar of Islam. This is the basic foundation of Islam. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buniya al-Islam ala khamsin shahadatan an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulullah وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةَ وَإِيتَاءِ الزَّقَاةَ وَالْحَجِّ وَالسَّوْمِ رَمَضَانِ The foundation or the pillars of Islam are on five things. Number one, witnessing, declaring, announcing, shahada, that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant, is the slave, and the messenger of Allah, offering salah and paying zakat and performing hajj and fasting in the month of Ramadan. So these are the four pillars of Islam and the first and the basic and the foremost pillar of Islam is to witness the oneness of Allah. So this monotheism, this tawheed, this belief in oneness of Allah is what without which Islam, faith or belief will not be perfected or completed. As Allah says, this will lead to all, all good deeds being wasted. Surah Al-An'am, verse number 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا 
وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِتَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ If they are to join partners with Allah, all that they did, that is all the good deeds they did would be in vain for them. Everything will go down the drain. Everything will be wasted and there will be no rewards of the good deeds, however great they may be, if the person has done what? لَوْ أَشْرَكُوا Joining partners with Allah and committing polytheism will waste all the good deeds. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is why Allah orders. Allah orders so frequently in Quran. Worship Allah and find no partners with Allah. Surah Zumar, verse number 65, Allah orders, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرًا فَتَقُونَ مِنَ الْمُعَذِّبِينَ do not call any other partners with Allah or you will be amongst those who will be punished. You will be among those who will be punished. This is Surah Shura, verse number 213. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in Surah Maida, verse number 72, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ there is absolutely no doubt. My Yushrik Billah, whoever finds partners with Allah, whoever commits polytheism, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ There it is sure shot, it is definite that Allah will forbid with him the gardens of paradise. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ And fire will be his abode. And this is exactly what we are reading today. The verse number 48. Let's repeat it again. In Allah la yaghfiru. Allah will not forgive. And yushrik bihi. That anybody finds partners with him. Wa yaghfiru maduna dhalika li man yashaw. Verse number 116 in Surah Nisa Allah repeats the same thing. That Allah will not forgive joining or finding partners with him. But he will forgive whom he pleases other sins than this. So that is why Prophet Wasallam condemned polytheism and ordered to stay steadfast on monotheism. The words of the hadith are La tushrik billahi shayya. Don't join partners with Allah. La tushrik billahi shayya wa in qutilta aw harrikta. Do not find partners with Allah even though you may be slain or you may be put in fire. So this is the importance of understanding the concept of monotheism and negating all forms of polytheism. A person who believes and has faith, committed faith on the oneness of Allah will be released from hellfire and he will be made to enter the paradise and will also receive the benefits of the intercession of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's so many ahadiths to explain all this concept. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever dies Mamata, whoever dies in a condition that he testifies with heartfelt conviction that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, he will enter paradise. So this is a promise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similarly, Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, that Prophet ﷺ was riding and Hazrat Mu'az bin Jabal was riding behind him and Prophet ﷺ called him, O Mu'az, and he replied, La baik Rasulullah wa sahdaika. Prophet ﷺ, I'm obedient and I'm, I'm here. Prophet ﷺ again called him, O Mu'az, and he repeated with the same words. Then he was again called, O Mu'az, and he again repeated with the same words. And then, getting his attention, Prophet ﷺ said, the person who affirms that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is their servant and the messenger of Allah, Allah will forbid hell for him. And another 
Another hadith narrated by Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Muslim Prophet says, Whoever dies in the condition that he considered certain that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah will enter paradise. So this is the promise for monotheism. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Tirmizi how Prophet sallallahu has promised the bondsmen of Allah forgiveness of all sins if they stick to the faith of oneness of Allah. Prophet said, Allah Almighty declares, O son of Adam, while you keep on calling me and you have hope in my forgiveness, I shall forgive every sin you have committed. O son of Adam, if you come to me with your sins that are about the size of the earth, and meet me in a state that you have never made anyone as my partner, I shall forgive all these sins that are even about the size of the earth. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatwaqireen. Rabbana, innana amanna, faghfir lana zanubana, faqina azaban nar.